Welcome into a 23 ABC Sports Special. I'm Matt Lively. Join with the incredible ESPN Pedro Gomez. I appreciate you so much talking with me for a few minutes. <laughs> Matt, it's my pleasure to be here with you, man. I wish uh, circumstances were different, but hey, you got to make do with whatever you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And when you say making do, it sounds like that's what the MLB might be doing. Uh, nothing official from their standpoint, but the rumors are that a three division, 10 teams in each uh, is kind of a plan that might be happening going forward. So the divisions are based off of geography. Uh, yeah. What are you hearing about this and is this realistic? Well, look, Major League Baseball and the Players Association are kicking around a bunch of different ideas. This is one of the ideas that they are kicking around. Uh, you know, there's also the idea that maybe all 30 clubs come to Phoenix, where I live, and play all here because there's enough facilities, major league quality facilities here. There's uh, the three team or the three division uh, idea that you're talking about. There's, there's other ideas out there. There's also an idea that they may all be able to play their home games in their home cities. That's also something that is being kicked around. So I, I think that there's nothing definitive. They are just kind of sending out trial balloons, kicking ideas around so that if if they're given the green light to go ahead and start, they're going to be ready with whatever plan they decide on. I personally think that maybe them playing in their home cities with no fans in attendance might be the uh, leader in the clubhouse, so to speak. Yeah, I could definitely see players enjoying that option the most. I know a lot of these guys don't want to leave their families. The yeah. other issue that I think about when I went to ASU for four years, you live in Phoenix, yeah. come July – 115 <laughs> does not sound yeah. fun to play in. How would, how would the MLB go about that? A game at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m.? Yeah, no, they would all be night games. And obviously the marquee game would be played at Chase Field, which is air-conditioned. Um, but the other games would take place at 7, 7.30 at night. But you, you know, you, you lived here. Uh, so 7 o'clock <laughs> o'clock is still 101 degrees, 102 yeah. degrees. And it, it would absolutely – be something that would wear down a lot of bodies. You would not see players playing every day of the week. There's no way that physically they'd be able to do that. So there would ob obviously be expanded rosters if this were the case, probably 35 or 40, and you rotate given 25 on, every, on any uh, selected night that you'd be playing. But uh, there are definitely obstacles to playing all the games here, and that's probably the number one obstacle, plus being away from your families as well. It sounds like whatever happens, it's going to look much different than what we're used yeah. to on a yearly basis. From all the pitches that you've heard, what's the most realistic that you think could happen? You know, Matt, I, I do think that uh, they're, they're leaning toward all 30 clubs playing in their home cities. Now, you'd have to have every state open right. in order for that to happen. And like, let's say California says no. Well, there's five major league clubs in California. That would obviously throw a wrench into that plan um i think ideally they would love for each club to play in their city because it would drum up the most interest even though no fans would be in attendance just watching the games from your own home stadium would help the fans the most so that's probably at the top of the list the next one probably is the three divisions with you know games being played here in arizona in texas and maybe in florida as well so uh, they, look, they, there is nothing that has been set upon. They are just kicking ideas around. In terms of players' reactions, have you spoken to anyone who's really on board, without naming names, what, what's yeah. the general consensus? Yeah, I mean, look, I've, I've been speaking to players the last few days, and uh, they want to play. And I, it's not – look, I can tell you, I talked to Max Scherzer today. I spoke to Brent Suter of the Milwaukee Brewers yesterday. There's other players I've been speaking to, Anthony Rizzo and things like that, but uh, they want to play. And I, you know, not, not just because they're competitors. You know, let's, let's not be naive here. Financially, it also benefits There's everybody if there are games played. Uh, you know, the big money guys are much more set. It's, it's the 400 or so making a million or less. Those are the guys that are hurting the most. Uh, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, they got paid during spring training. Players do not get paid right. during spring training. The first paycheck is April 15th. They get paid on the 15th and the 30th of every month. 
and they missed out on that first check. So there are a lot of, of families that, you know, need some money as well. They haven't been paid since September of last year. They only get paid during the season. And, you know, during previous work stoppages, Matt, there was always at least the Players Association being able to tell the players, hey, look, there could be a, a work stoppage. Save your money. Well, this was a lightning bolt. No one saw this coming. And players did not prepare for it. And they're, you know, you, you just turn it around. And there, there are definitely some families that are hurting. And I know no one's going to feel sorry for them. They're major league players. But there are a lot of players that have not made money yet. Right. You have the Mookie bets. You're doing okay. Yeah. But there are a lot of guys just coming through the minor leagues that are not at that level yet. So No, so, not so even close. I, I read today Dave Roberts. You know, there's been this big question yeah. over – will there be an asterisk next to a World Series champion if all of this goes through? Dave Roberts made a really compelling point that said, having to keep your team together, the emotional aspect of all of this, it's actually tougher than a regular season. Is the consensus around Major League Baseball, this is a fake season and there would be an asterisk oh, next to the World Series? If they start playing, there'll be nothing fake about it. <laughs> um, you know, these guys are competitors. And yeah, the circumstances were going to be, they're going to be, different than anything we've ever seen before ever in the history of the game over 150 years they've been playing baseball and uh yeah it will be different but there will be absolutely nothing diminished or tarnished about anything that happens this season it'll just be viewed as different circumstances when i was telling my friends that i was doing this interview with you all of them had one question they wanted to know Obviously, there will be some rule changes that go into any different format. The big one is the designated hitter. Is this something that <laughs> after this year, maybe the DH sticks around uh, league-wide? Probably so. Uh, okay. look, there's, there's, there's been a lot of uh, people that want to eliminate pitchers from stepping in the batter's box. I know there, there's the occasional pitcher who can hit, a Madison Bumgarner, a Zach Greinke, right. you know, those type of guys. But – the great majority are automatic outs. Now, pitchers actually do not want to see the DH because it's another big time right. out that they have to record every nine outs. They love having a pitcher come up because it's, it's considered an out, basically. So National League pitchers love having pitchers hit, even though they can't, for the most part, hit because it just makes their work easier. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would say that in all likelihood – if we have that three division alignment and there are DHs on all 30 clubs, that's probably something that's going to stick. That's the end of the picture there. Okay. Yeah. We are just uh, up the street from LA here in Bakersfield. So yep. the Dodger Astro, everything with the sign <laughs> stealing is very, it's, it's very fresh. It's very hot still in this. Uh, I think with the regular season, maybe they were going to meet once. I don't even know if they were going to meet at all. But with, No, they weren't. They weren't scheduled this year. They weren't scheduled. So with a new division, the Astros and the Dodgers find themselves yeah. in the same league here or same division. What will that do for ratings? Will it be different because <laughs> fans won't be in the stands? Do you still see that fire that will be there between those two clubs? It won't be as, as intense as if fans were in the stadium. Sure. Um, There'll, there'll be there'll be some yeah yeah I mean guys like Alex Wood have been on the record Clayton Kershaw has been on the record Justin Turner's been on the record saying they you know they strongly dislike what happened um, so that's not going to go away but the fact that there won't be fans in there to kind of throw lighter fluid onto the flame will make it less and plus just all the circumstances surrounding this pandemic how our lives have all changed i think that also probably has pushed that whole sign stealing scandal to the back burner maybe not fully to the back burner but at least pushing it in that direction i don't think you'd see the same animosity as if it were a regular season game but again they weren't scheduled to face each other this year the only thing that would have happened was the all-star game would have been at dodger stadium and certainly there would be several astros there the reaction from the Dodger Stadium fans uh, when the player introductions were going on would have been interesting. Do you think with everything that's happened, when fans do come back into stadiums, maybe it's not going to be as intense? I can still remember a time when I was at Fenway Park and it was Ryan Braun's first trip since his scandal <laughs> and the boos yeah. were echoing. Uh, do you think once fans are allowed back, the Astros are it's going to kick right back into gear or it's kind of it happened, it's over? 
It won't be it, it happened, it's over, but I don't think it'll be at the same fever pitch that it would have been right. if if everything had been normal. Uh, I do believe that you will still have fans that are going to voice their displeasure with the Astros. That's not going to go away, but I don't believe it would be at the same fever pitch, like I said, that it would have been under normal circumstances. All right, and then my last one for you with how flawlessly ESPN did the NFL draft, which it was yeah. really impressive to see how. I, I completely agree. <laughs> it was, and the ratings were great. Fans yeah. were so starved for sports. It's sounding like maybe NASCAR could be coming back. The NBA is returning to facilities, but in another country, Korean baseball is beginning yeah. very soon. And I, uh, it's right out there in the public. ESPN has been negotiating yep. uh, to broadcast those rights Will you have any role in that? How would that work? It, it would all be done from here, from a studio, probably in Connecticut, the, the play-by-play and everything. We would not travel to Korea for, for these games. We would just be picking up the, uh, you know, the satellite feeds. Um, but I think it'd be fascinating. I think fans are starved for live sports right. again. And even if it's Korean baseball, that's okay. Uh, you know, there are some Americans playing over there. Matt Williams is going to manage – one of the teams in Korea, the former San Francisco Giant, Arizona Diamondback player, the third baseman. So there, there will be some familiar names, certainly not many, but some. And that alone, just live competition, live baseball, I think that will, without a doubt, be a success. Could you see that? I mean, Korean baseball players come over to the MLB all the time. Yeah. This is a great opportunity for them to nationally be broadcast in front oh. of these scouts who are sitting at home and have nothing better to do. So could you actually see an influx of Korean players over the next two years if this happens? Well, I mean, certainly that possibility is going to be there. They're, there's, they're going to have way more exposure than they normally would. Um, many more eyes will be on them if this does, you know, go on. And uh, that's, that's how you get found. That's how you get discovered. So uh, yeah, it may not be huge numbers, but you could very well see a few extra Korean players coming over to play Major League Baseball, no doubt about it. And there's been some, you know, the old Pittsburgh Pirate uh, infielder Gong and Young Young Kim, and, there, you know, there's been, there's been a handful. But sh- sure, we could see a, trickle, a few more trickle in. All right, Pedro Gomez. Pedro, you're one of the nicest guys in the uh, sports media <laughs> business. You treat ASU Cronkite students so well. So uh, <laughs> no surprise that you came on here with me today. Thanks for uh, joining us and stay healthy. Yeah, you too, Matt. And uh, thank you for the, for the visit and uh, all the best to you, man. I, like I said, I've always been a fan. I've followed you. So Thanks, keep it Pedro. up. All right.